last lecture, we look at the concept of couple and we see how we can uh, write down a force into a force and a couple system. Today, we are going to do a couple of examples based on the same concept. So, let me just quickly revise what we have done in the last lecture. Suppose, I have a rigid body and on this rigid body, a force F is acting at point P1 and I want to translate this force at point P2. So, what I do is at point P2, I add two equal and opposite forces. Then this force and this force, they mix a couple and this couple is a free vector. So, I can place it at point P2. So, at point P2, I put a couple, let us denote it by m and what we have is only this force F. Okay? And the value of the couple m is force times the distance between uh, the point P1 and point P2. Now, let us say I have two forces now which are F1 and F2, they are acting on this body and we want to see their effect at point P1. So, what we can do is at point P1, so I had this force F1, I had this force F2. So, at point P1, I can add equal F1 and minus F1. So, this force and this force is going to make a couple. Similarly, this force F2, I can add equal and opposite amount. So, this force and this force is again going to make a moment. So, therefore, I am left with F which is equal to F1 plus F2 and a moment M which is you know M1 plus M2. So, moment M which is M1 plus M2 will be force F1 D1 plus F2 D2. Again, I am not taking care of the sign, but it will be you know F1 D1 plus F2 d2. So, now we do not need these intermediate steps. What we need is the initial and the final result wherein we take these forces, we translate them to the desired point and then calculate the moment about that point and then uh, you know you also calculate what is the resultant force at that point. So, let us make use of these concept and uh, let us look at this problem statement. So, here the problem statement is determine the resultant of the four forces and one couple which act on the plate shown. So, here in this example, you can see that there are four forces which are acting on this plate and also there is a couple and we have to find out what is the resultant of these forces and the couple. So, uh, in this let us choose some convenient point about which we will calculate you know all the forces and moment etcetera. So, for that let us choose that O is our convenient point. Okay? So, let us select point O as a convenient A reference point for this force couple system. Okay. So, first let us calculate all the forces that are you know acting on it and let us calculate their x and y component. So, R x will be 40 plus 80 cos 30 degree minus 60 cos 45 degree because this is acting in the x direction then we have this 80 newton force its component along the x axis will be 80 cos 30 similarly we have 60 newton force its component along the x axis will be minus 60 cos 45 degree
So, if we calculate that because we know the values of cos 30 and cos 45, this comes out to be 66.9 Newton. Similarly, we can calculate the y component of the force and it will be 50 plus 80 sin 30 degree plus 60 sin 45 degree and this comes out to be 132.4 Newton. Now, R will be R x square plus R y square and this comes out to be 148.3 Newton and similarly the angle that the resultant make from the x axis it will be 10 inverse R y over R x. So, it will be 132.4 divided by 66.9 this will be 63.2 degree. Okay. Now, the moment about O will be 140 because it is a couple it is a free vector. So, either I can place it here or I can as well take it at point O. So, it will be 140 minus now let us calculate the moment of these forces about O. So, it will be 50 multiplied by 5 because this distance is 5. So, therefore, about O this distance will be 5 plus 60 cos 45 degree multiplied by 4 minus 60 sin 45 degree multiplied by 7. Okay. And this you can find out it will be minus 237 Newton meter. So, so far what I have done is we have taken this plate and about point O we find out the moment and the moment comes out to be 237. Okay. And since it is negative, so that means it is in the clockwise direction. So, let me just change this direction. So, it will be 237 about point O and then we have a resultant at uh, 63.2 degree and its value is 148.3 Newton. So, this is the force couple system consisting of R and M naught. So, what we have done so far is we have replaced all these four forces and a couple into a moment and a resultant force R. Now, let us determine the final line of action of capital R such that R alone represents the original system. So, what do I mean by that? So, up to now we have this point O and uh, the moment was 237 and the resultant was 148.3. Now, this we want to replace by a single force R and this we are going to do by moving this force R by a distance d. So, let us see if we can account for this moment m by translating this force r. So, uh, for this we have the force multiplied by distance should give me the moment. So, from here I can find out how much I have to translate this force so that I can account for the moment. So, d comes out to be 1.6 meter. Okay. So, that means I have to translate this force by 1.6 meter in so, therefore, I can account for the you know moment. Now, let us use the vector expression to determine the final line of action. Okay. So, let us say I have a point x y on 
this resultant and I use r cross r equal to m naught. So, this distance multiplied by the force should give me the moment and let us say r is x i plus y z. Now, capital R I have already calculated. So, capital R is R x i plus R y z. So, therefore, it will be 66.9 i plus 132.4 z and this should give me minus 237 k because the moment is minus 237. Now, this is a vector product and uh, it can be find out. So, it will be 132.4 x minus 66.9 y k cap and this should be equal to minus 237 k cap therefore 132.4 x minus 66.9 y should give you minus 237 and this is the final line of action equation of the force. Now, let us uh, look at the second question on the same concept and the problem statement is following. So, this is question number 2. Determine the x and y axis intercepts of the line of action. of the resultant of three loads applied to the gear set. So, let us say we have this gear set and there are three forces of amplitude 3.6, 1.5 and 2.4 kilo Newton which are applied on this gear set and uh, we have to find out what is the resultant you know force and what is its line of action. So, we can draw the schematic. So, O is at the center and uh, we have the first gear, then we have the second gear and we have the third gear and uh, the first force is acting on the first gear from vertical it is making a 20 degree let us say it is f 1 and the value is of course, 1.5 kilo Newton then f 2 is making 20 degree from the horizontal. So, let us say this is f 2 and its value is given it is 2.4 kilo Newton and again f 3 is acting on the third gear its value is 3.6 kilo Newton and it is also making an angle 20 degree from the horizontal. Now, the radius of the first gear is 0.12 meter, radius of the second gear is 0.2 meter and radius of the third gear is 0.3 meter. Now, let us say O is the convenient point about which we are going to find out the line of action and the resultant. So, R x will be minus 1.5 sin 20 degree plus 2.4 cos 20 degree minus 3.6 cos 20 degree and you can find its value it comes out to be minus 1.641 kilo Newton. Similarly, we can find out R y and uh, this is minus 1.5 cos 20 degree minus 2.4 sin 20 degree plus 3.6 sin 20 degree and it comes out to be minus 0.999 kilo Newton. Therefore, capital R will be minus 1.641 i minus 0.999 j kilo Newton. 
now the moment about O will be minus 1.5 cos 20 degree. So, this is the vertical component of this force, then I have to multiply it by the perpendicular distance. So, multiplied by the radius which is 0 0.12. Similarly, for the second force minus 2.4 cos 20 degree multiplied by 0 0.2 and minus 3.6 cos 20 degree multiplied by 0 0.3 and this gives me minus 0 0.1635 kilonewton meter. So, what we have done so far is uh, we have replaced this forces which were acting on the gear by a resultant r and the moment about o ok and the moment m o was minus 1.635 kilonewton meter and the r was minus 1.641 i minus 0.99 j kilonewton. But in the question statement, it was asked to find out the line of action of the resultant and what are its intercept on the x and y axis. So, that means, it has asked you to replace it by a single resultant r and then find out what is the x intercept and what is the y intercept ok. So, now we have to account for this moment by replacing this r. So, let us do that. So, now let us determine the final line of action of r such that r alone represents the original system. Okay. For that let us use our master equation r cross r should be the moment and let us take x i plus y z as our r multiplied by the resultant r which is minus 1.641 i minus 0.999 j and this is equal to minus 1.635 k. Now, this is a vector cross product you can do that it comes out to be minus 0 0.999 x plus 1.641 y equal to minus 1.6 3 5 ok. Now, we can rewrite this equation as x over 1.637 plus y over minus 0.997 equal to 1 and this is in the form of x over a plus y over b equal to 1. Therefore, these are the intercepts on the x and the y axis. So, the resultant is like this and this is your x intercept and this is your y intercept ok. So, with this let me stop here in the next class we will look at the similar examples, but they are in three dimension. Thank you.